Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us this week. We're going to talk about creating an interactive table of contents in PowerPoint. So what we're looking at is a table of contents. And I'm going to show you three different ways to create a table of contents. Let me walk through what we have in this PowerPoint presentation first. I have the title slide, and then we'll have a table of contents with some sections. There's a blue section, yellow, red, green sections. And I will show you a few different ways to lay out a table of contents. This is what the section will look like. You can see a blue, a red, and they're actually PowerPoint sections. You know, you can rename the section, you can you know, have a unique section, and I'll show you why that would be important to have a section instead of just a sequence of 24 slides sequentially. There might be some value in breaking things up into these sections. So the sections just look like a title slide with the color and text, and then a few stock images that I grabbed from PowerPoint stock images. And so nothing fancy, but I just wanted to be able to delineate the content of this PowerPoint presentation. And ideally, this will be full of content for your courses. This will be more meaningful than what I have presenting. But for the purpose of what we're doing, this is what I want to create. So I have a text box here. We're going to go ahead and create our first table of contents using text. This could be a bullet list. And I just color coded the words. They could all be black. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to have some fun. And so what I'm going to do before I get into the hyperlink, and I'm going to create a copy of this. And the reason why is I have these formatting. So I, I want to keep that so that I can format it afterwards. Because when you hyperlink something, it automatically changes it to blue with blue underline. So I just want to go back and, and reformat those. So my first table of contents, I'm going to take blue. I'm going to highlight it and either right click, you'll look for the link button right in the middle, or you can press Control or Command K on the keyboard, which is usually what I do. But either way, it'll take you to a window where you can link the content. And so what I have is I have a hyperlink. Of course, you could put it to a website or an email, whatever. I want to put it into a place in this document. And so I'm going to search the slides until I find that blue section. This is the first slide in the blue section. And I'll go ahead and hyperlink that so that it's blue. And I'll do the same for these. Control K. And so I'm going to find that yellow section. Red, Control K. And here's the red. Now I'll mention if you have a slide that actually has a title on the slide, then the slide will be called that title. It'll be a little bit easier. I didn't have any titles. I just put some content on slides. So they say slide two, slide 20, whatever. These, these are all hyperlinked. This is now my table of contents that is hyperlinked. And let's give it a preview before we do anything else. So I have blue, yellow, red. Let's cl click on red, and that'll take me to the red section. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to go that route and have an option that I can come back to this table of content slides, then I could create maybe a button. So let's insert. Let's show how to make a button and I'll have it in the lower corner and I'll just say return or back or return to the home screen and control K to hyperlink that and I'll just return it back to you know the home screen. So now if I just play from the beginning, I have my title slide, I have my table of contents, I can click on blue, that'll take me to the blue section. And then when I click return, it'll take me back to the table of contents section. And if I wanted that to fade in, I would just put a transition, maybe a, a morph or a push or a wipe. All right, so now you can see that when you hyperlink something, it, create, it makes it so that it's blue and underlined, and you click on it, it's purple. And so I just want to take this formatting that I had before and copy it over there. So I'm going to highlight blue, click on the Format Painter, and then I will highlight the new blue. It keeps the underline, unfortunately. So I'm going to highlight the yellow, Format Painter. It's just going to take all that formatting. Ah, shoot. Uh, format Painter, I'll double click, I guess, and yellow. All right. And then red, I'll go to Format Painter. And it makes it red. And then green. And you could just keep it, you know, blue underlined. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to show you that that is a feature that is optional. All right, so we have looked at hyperlinking text onto a list, and that's one way that you can create a table of contents. It's actually not my favorite way, but I think it's relevant. It's it's good for you to know the features that we have here, the, the fact that 
control K or command K exists and that you can hyperlink to things. But one thing before I get on, before I go away from this table of contents, I'm going to pull up this menu again, the edit hyperlink menu. And something that's kind of fun that I think that almost nobody knows about is that there's this screen tip button in the corner here. And that way, when you ho hover over um, hyperlink text, then it'll have a pop-up with some instructions. So I could say, click on the word blue to go to the blue section. So if I click OK, then you can see as I hover over, um, by default, it says con control plus click to follow the link, it takes you to slide 10 or slide 15. This one, instead of saying slide 10, slide 15, slide 20, it, it says what I told it to say, click on the word blue to go to the blue section. And so I think that's kind of interesting that you can have a little bit of control there. So let's create a table of contents in a different way. And so I have this table of contents right here. I have all of my slides built out. And what I can do is drag and drop. I can drag this slide from the thumbnail onto the actual slide. And I'm going to just you know, clean this up a little bit. And you notice when I deleted that, it actually cleaned up the slide here. So this is really a thumbnail of the slides. And so I can put uh, yellow, I'm gonna scroll down, put red, and the last one is green. All right, so these are thumbnails of the slide that I, I pulled from the thumbnail to over here. I'm going to make these just a tiny bit smaller and then maybe align them. So I'll put the blue here. I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to align them so that the top, the top of each of the slides aligns with the top of the blue slide. And then I'll distribute them so that they're evenly spaced and maybe move it a little bit apart, redistribute them. That way the space is the same in between each one. I don't know. Something about me is just I'm wanting to keep tinkering just a little bit. So I'm going to move the green over so that it's the same distance from the right as the blue is from the left. And then I will highlight all of these and then I would distribute it horizontally. And that way the space is the same between each of those. And additionally, I can do a few other enhancements. I can change the shape. I can add a drop shadow, for example, make them circles or put some borders, maybe, you know, this drop shadow here. And I can modify the drop shadow as well using you know, the different styling options. So now I have a table of contents where it will take me to each section. Let's take a look at what that will be like in terms of navigation. So here's my slide. And then you can see my mouse cursor changes as I hover over each one of these because they're hyperlinked. It's essentially a hyperlink that will animate. And when I click on it, it takes me right to that slide. And so that's pretty cool. Now, if I click forward and back, it'll take me so that I can you know, just advance. I put a morph transition for each of these. The other thing you can do is suppose I have a blue, I'm going to click on the zoom options at the very top here. And there's an option in the top left corner, the zoom options, I can return to zoom, which means that it'll take me when I click on this, it'll take me to blue, instead of going to the next section, it'll take me back to this table of contents slide, you can see in the lower right hand corner that this will take me to slide five and there's an arrow. So that will take me back to this slide as opposed to yellow, red, and green, where if I click on this, it'll take me to slide 10 and then I'll just go from slide 10 and go until the end of the presentation. So let's preview that from this slide. I'm going to first click on blue. It'll take me to the blue section. Um, so that could be interesting as well. So if I click zoom, this will take me to the yellow slide and then it'll return. I can do that for these two as well. Let's try one more table of contents. What I had done is just take a slide from the thumbnail, drag it onto the slide, and that'll create a zoom slide. Another way to do this would be to insert zoom and you can insert a zoom slide. And this way I can check all of them that I want. So suppose I wanted everything from the yellow section. I just click on these and insert them and it inserts them. It's kind of ugly. I have to go and, you know, realign everything. If you take the mouse cursor out somewhere, click on it and then drag while you're holding down on the click, you can select everything all at once. So I'm going to select those. I'm going to make them small again. And then I will just select them again and align everything. This time I'll align them in the center and then distribute them. That's another way that you can insert slides is just go to zoom, zoom slide. You can insert 
you can just select all of the slides that you would want. Uh, but I'm going to show you another thing. Since I created sections, I have a blue section, a yellow section, red. I'm going to go to this table of contents and insert um, zoom. And I'm going to go to uh, section zoom. It says, OK, so I have the default section, these first few slides I'm working with. I have a blue, yellow, red, green section. And so I'm going to insert. I don't have to select every section that I have, but I'm going to select these ones here. And same deal, I'm just going to align them, make them look nice. You could put them two by two. You could put them I don't, whatever, however you want. And so I'm going to distribute them. I'll go to zoom again, a little bit of styling. Let's just let's just play with one of these other styles, I guess. I don't really like any of these. I, I'll just stick with the shadow, the drop shadow styles, I think. So now I have a section zoom. And now I'm seeing something different than I had on number two, which was that it says, go to slide five, 10, 15, 20, then return. When I do the section zoom, you can see it goes from five to nine and then return, and then 10 to 14 and then return, 15 to 19 return, and then 20 to 24 and then return. So let's preview that and see what it's like. So we'll first go to maybe green. We haven't visited green yet. So there's the green slide. Now I'm on slide 15. And when I advance, it takes me to the next slide. And I have a morph transition between slides. And so it's getting me that animation. All right, so this is the last one. And when I'm done with that, it zooms back out and it takes me to the table of contents page. And of course, you wouldn't call it table of contents. You would think of something creative. But it's an interesting way that you can talk about, like if you're teaching a class, different concepts but you can have, have everything back on a home screen. So that way you can tie everything back in. So let's look at yellow. So yellow takes me out. And I like that transition, by the way, that, um, that animation. It looks very seamless and it's, it's a really good animation. And then you're at a different place. And then you can jump to the next slide. And I'll show you how I did this effect, how everything kinds of, kind of merges into each other. And then red would be the same thing. And then I morph into my red images. So in order to get that effect where things kind of blend into each other, if you go in the selection pane, if you go to the home and in the editing group, you have the selection and I'm going to select the selection pane, highlight this picture. And then in the selection pane, you want it to name it something with two exclamation marks, and then you can name it whatever you want. So I'm not creative. So I put two exclamation marks, yellow, and I just made sure that each of these are called yellow. You can see in the selection. And so that way PowerPoint thinks it's it's the same image. And obviously it's not, but when you apply the morph transition, then it'll take one image and it'll morph it into the other image, whether that's stretching it out or whether that's changing the color. In fact, just for fun, it would be interesting to see how if I were to call, if I were to take something that's red, so like something's very different, and I'm going to rename that from red to yellow, and let's see how that morphed would look. So here's my little yellow robot, and then he morphs into red trees. And so that's an interesting effect. And this would be the advantage to using sections in your PowerPoint presentation is that you can have all of the content for one group of your lecture or activities and then use a section zoom to interact with each of those different sections and then pull it back up. And again, to do that, you'd go insert, zoom, and you have uh, section zoom. Now, zoom will also create it, its own table of contents without you having to do anything. If I were to go up to my initial slide here, go to insert, zoom, and go to summary zoom, then automatically I can create a summary with all of the elements. By default, it manually, you know, it automatically selects the first slide in each section, and then it'll create a new slide and a new section called the summary section. And here are my sections. You can add the title. Um, so if you wanted, you could do that. I just like having a little bit more control. I just like doing it from scratch for whatever reason. That's just me. I like having my own title with my own font and having the control to play around with the elements. And that's not saying that you can't do that here. You can move these around a little bit. There's a little bit of freedom, but 
Um, it's more just an automated process that it'll create that for you. So I'm going to remove that section. Um, Zoom background is interesting also. I'll just create a new slide where this slide is going to be a circle. Let's make it a circle. I'm going to duplicate that slide. And this first slide, I'm going to put a zoom to that slide. But first, I need to put a background. So I'm going to design. I'm just kind of having some, some fun. I'm going to format the background, maybe a gradient fill. OK, something like that. And the, I'm going to take this slide. I'm going to drag and drop the zoom over here. And now you can see, you know, it's a preview it's of the thumbnail. But I'm going to go to zoom. And I'm going to remove the background. And so then you see it just keeps the circle. It, see, it keeps the element on the slide, but it takes out the background. In this case, the background is white. And so it just keeps the, the circle part. And if I were to change that to a different shape, I'll go to Shape Format, Edit Shape, and I'll just change it to a triangle, for example. And then I hop back here. Now the whole slide is, is linked. You can see the selection box. It's a rectangle. It's still the, the entire slide, but it doesn't have that background element. And so that can be interesting as well. You can have, for example, a, a picture, maybe a map. If you could get really creative uh, with this and have this presentation, we're going to be exploring something. You can create a map of what we're going to explore. And then you can put different landmarks on the map. And the landmarks would be like a triangle, like different triangles or something. And so you could have mountains and a sky and a lake. And then you can have these hyperlinks, but they won't look they, they won't look like boxes that are awkwardly floating on top of things. It'll be a little bit more seamless, you know. So, so that's an interesting effect that I'm glad that I could show you as well. I want to thank everybody for attending this webinar, creating interactive table of contents in PowerPoint. We explored Zoom and we explored a lot of functionality to add interactivity, multimedia and imagery into our courses. And so I hope you find it useful and we look forward to having you next time.